Hello and welcome back to the Underfloor Heating Review channel. If this is the first time you are seeing the channel, then please do hit that subscribe button. Today we're going to be talking all about underfloor heating pipes and later on I'll show you how to calculate how much pipe you'll need for a given area. So before we get started talking about pipe, I would like to mention that in this video I'm just concentrating on the use of these pipes in an underfloor heating application. So if you've been searching around for underfloor heating pipes, you may well have come across the term barrier pipe. This term refers to an oxygen barrier layer that is included in the construction of the pipe. This is typically an aluminium or an EVOH, which stands for ethylene vinyl alcohol layer. It's used in many other industries as it's simply better than other plastics are keeping the air out. Simply put, barrier pipe of different constructions is the only pipe now used in underfloor heating systems. Whatever pipe you choose to use, it's extremely important that the oxygen barrier complies with either BS7821 or DIN4726, which is the German variant, which specifies that oxygen diffusion for a non-permeable pipe may not exceed 0.1 grams per cubic metre of fluid per day. So I'd now like to talk about the three most common types of underfloor heating pipe used within underfloor heating systems. The first is PB or polybutylene. Polybutylene pipe was developed in the 70s and used extensively from the early 80s up until the mid-1990s. It was considered at the time to be an excellent substitute for copper due to its flexibility and low cost. However, users started reporting leaks and it was discovered that chemicals in the water such as chlorine would make the material susceptible to breaking down. Later, oxygen barriers were incorporated into the pipes as a solution, but due to the problems of the past, Many people still choose not to use this type of pipe. The second type of pipe I would like to talk about is known as PEX, which stands for cross-linked polyethylene. It comes in different variants such as PEXA, PEXB and PEXC. This refers to the method of cross-linking. PEX is not as flexible as others and is, known, and is known to have what's called memory, where it tries to return back to the shape it was coiled in. It has a high temperature resistance but as underfloor heating systems should never exceed 55 degrees, this is not really an issue. The third commonly used type of underfloor heating pipe is known as PERT, which stands for polyethylene of raised temperature. This type of pipe has excellent stress resistance. It is flexible and easy to lay with less memory than PEX. These materials have a unique molecular structure which provides excellent long-term strength at high temperatures without the need for cross-linking the material. Both PEX pipes and PERT pipes can also come with an aluminium oxygen barrier layer, as I mentioned before. These are the same as the standard PEX and PERT, however with the aluminium layer it makes it easier to work with and they hold their shape once bent, but they are more expensive as a result. So what should you choose, PEX or PERT? Well both work well and are commonly used. My advice would be to buy from a reputable company that has tested its products to ensure they comply with the regulations. Testing and conformity is not cheap, so a good company will always openly state and make it very clear that their pipe is of good quality and compliance. In future videos, we will take a look at some of the companies in the UK and the types of pipe they supply. So what about pipe sizes? The most common sizes of pipe used in the UK are 16mm, 17mm and 12mm. 12mm pipe is becoming more popular due to the increase of dry construction systems. By this we mean a system that does not have a screed covering over the top. I will talk about different types of system in an upcoming video, so please stay tuned. So let's talk about what you can tell by looking at an underfloor heating pipe. I'll now show you a picture on the screen um, of this pipe and uh, I'll talk you through the marks and what they mean. So on the far left of the picture you'll first see the number 646M. This, this is uh, used as a, as a measurement indicator. So for example, if you needed 20 meters of pipe, you'd be cutting from this point to then meter 666. Next, we see uh, the name of the brand um, and also the type of pipe. So this is a five layer heating pipe, which is PERT, which is poly polyethylene raised temperature. Um, the diameter of pipe, so that's 12 millimeters. Um, and 1.4 is the thickness of the pipe. It has an integral oxygen barrier to DIN4726, which I talked about earlier, um, and also um, the SKZA236, 
um, is actually a German testing house, which is SKZ. Um, so this is showing that the product's been, uh, been thoroughly tested uh, and is of good quality. So now let's talk about how you can calculate how much pipe you will need or how many circuits of pipe you'll need for a given area. So the first thing you're going to need to know to try and calculate how much pipe you need in a given area is the, not only the type of pipe that you're using, but the maximum pipe length that the manufacturer recommends. Now, if you can't find this information, there are some rules to thumb to go by. I'll put these on the screen now, but I would recommend uh, that you do check with the manufacturer first. The second thing you're going to need to know is at what pipe centers you're going to be laying the pipe. Now, the term pipe centers means the distance in millimeters between the two pipes when they're laid. Commonly, this is going to be 200 millimeters, 150 millimeters, or sometimes 100 millimeter centers. I will talk about the differences between them in a future video. Thirdly, you're going to need to know the distance from the room to where the manifold is located. So this is usually from the doorway, or it could be through a wall. So sometimes the manifold is just the other side of the wall, and it's easy for you to get the pipe through. So when you are measuring this distance, you want to take the distance across the floor to the manifold and remember to add usually one meter to go up the wall into the manifold. And finally, the last piece of information you need to know is the calculation itself. Now to calculate how much pipe you need, um, you need to know these figures on the right here. So if your pipe centers are 200 millimeter centers, you need to take the area and not multiply it by five for 150 millimeter centers, you take the area and times it by 6.6, .6, and for 100 millimeter centers, you take the area and times that by 10. I'll now show you the calculation in full. So it's area multiplied by either one of these figures, depending on which pipe centers you've got. You then plus the distance to manifold times two, and then finally, you add 5% for wastage. So in this example, so example one, we've got an area of 15 square meters. We're gonna have our pipe centers at 200 millimeter centers and the distance to manifold is five meters. So the worked example is 15 square meters multiplied by five equals 75. That means for the, just in the room, you need 75 meters of pipe. You then take the distance to the manifold and multiply that by two, which gives us another 10 meters. You add the two together, we've got 85 meters. We then plus 5% and that gives us 89 meters of pipe total required. So in this case, we would need a 90 meter coil of pipe. Okay, so I hope that was clear, but I'll do another example for you quickly, uh, just so that you can be sure. And this one's slightly different. So the criteria are that the room is 24 meters squared. We plan to use 17 millimeter pipe at 150 millimeter centers. Remember, this is area times 6.6. .6. And the distance to manifold is gonna be six meters. So our calculation is 24 multiplied by 6.6, .6, which gives us 158. Now immediately we've got a problem there because we know that for 17 millimeter pipe, we can't go more than 100 meters. So now we need to be thinking, right, do I need two? or perhaps three. So the only way we're gonna know for sure is to run the calculation. So we'll do 158 divided by two, gives us 79.2 meters. We then take the distance to manifold, which is six meters, and multiply that by two. Remember that's the flow and return from the manifold, and that gives us 12. If we then add these two figures together, we get 91.2. We then plus our 5% for wastage, and it's coming out at 95.8 meters of pipe. So we're under the 100 meters. So in this particular example, we need two 100 meter coils of pipe uh, to complete that room. So I hope you found this video all about pipe uh, interesting, not too confusing. Um, we've just launched our website, which is www.ufhadvice.com. Uh, and on there, if you go to the section um, about pipe, um, I've actually given you four working examples um, of different rooms with different pipe centers. Um, so please do go and have a look at that. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Next week, we're gonna be talking about manifolds. As always, if you've got any questions at all about anything you've seen in this video or my previous videos, then please do put a comment in the section below and I'll be happy to answer your questions.